Hi Impact, how are you? I hope you've had a good week. Today we're going to be looking at how the church equips us to spread the good news. So we're going to be having a look at Acts 13, 1-12, which is when Paul and Barnabas are first sent out on the first known organised mission of the church. So let's read the passage now. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Menaean, who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. The two of them, sent on their way by the Holy Spirit, went down to Seleucia and sailed from there to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. John was with them as their helper. They travelled through the whole island until they came to Paphos. There they met a Jewish sorcerer and false prophet named Bar-Jesus, who was an attendant of the proconsul, Sergius Paulus. The proconsul, an intelligent man, sent for Barnabas and Saul because he wanted to hear the word of God. But Elimas the sorcerer, for that is what his name means, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul from the faith. Then Saul, who was also called Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked straight at Elimas and said, You are a child of the devil, and an enemy of everything that is right. You are full of all kinds of deceit and trickery. Will you never stop perverting the right ways of the Lord? Now the hand of the Lord is against you. You are going to be blind for a time, not even able to see the light of the sun. Immediately, mist and darkness came over him, and he groped about, seeking someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was amazed at the teaching about the Lord. So this is the first known organised mission of the church, and it begins with the church in prayer. We see elsewhere in the Bible this common theme of people praying before they set out to do God's work. For example, Jesus himself prayed every step of the way in his ministry. We see him in Gethsemane praying before going to the cross. It's really important that we grow in prayer because it brings us closer to God. And as we foster this relationship and grow this relationship, we get to hear God more and more. The other part of this that the church at Antioch did was fasting. Fasting like prayer shows a dependence on God and is another way to practice hearing from him. This act of self-sacrifice or self-denial brings us closer to him and allows us to hear him more clearly as we focus on him rather than ourselves. We can do this on our own as an individual with God, or we can do it in community. It's good to do things together as the church, as the body of Christ. God made us to live in community as this one body, and we can offer and receive so much support when we meet together to hear from God. Self-denial, such as through fasting, can be a difficult thing to do, and coming together as a community can be a great way of encouraging each other and supporting each other as we go through this and grow in it. Within this passage in Acts, we see a real dependence on God and the church waiting to hear the Holy Spirit. Before a missions trip, people who are going to spread the gospel might do something called spiritual mapping, which is where you plan who you're going to reach and aim to reach. The church in Antioch didn't do this, they just listened to the Holy Spirit and sent Barnabas and Paul as they'd been told. Throughout this passage, we're seeing a huge dependence on God that the church has and fosters. And this is something we should really aim to have and to find. And we can do this through prayer and other spiritual disciplines. We also don't have to share the good news on our own. Paul and Barnabas went together as the Holy Spirit had called them and John came to help them too. God did make us to be in community together and this can go further than praying together and lead to our front lines. There's also times when we can share the good news on our own, but there is real power in coming together as Christians to pray for each other and equip each other as we go out to share the story of Jesus. When we're sharing the good news, we can rely on God to give us opportunities if we ask him. In the passage, Paul and Barnabas are summoned by the proconsul because he wanted to hear the word of God. They meet opposition from Elimas in doing this, but God worked in this moment so that the proconsul saw and believed what was being spoken to him. 
God works in ways that we may not always notice. And so it's really important to be praying and trust that God is faithful and he will support us and give us opportunities to share about him. God gave Paul and Barnabas opportunities to share the news of Jesus with powerful people. The proconsul was responsible for an entire province and reported to the Roman Senate, making him really important. And after hearing them and seeing how God reacted to opposition, he saw and believed. Another way that God provided opportunities for them was through the tradition of any learned man being allowed to speak at a Sabbath meeting at the synagogues. They took this opportunity and preached regularly the good news. So there are loads of ways that the church can equip us to share the good news. We've spoken a bit about prayer, fasting and coming together in community, focusing on God throughout all of this. Another way that we see, especially in the early church, is through shared resources. The early church started in houses and house groups and it relied on people sharing possessions either financial donations, opening up their front rooms, where the church can meet and worship together and preach the word of the Lord. One of the people we see doing this is Lydia, who offered her house to Paul and to the people with him to preach the word. These were ordinary people who believed in the gospel and did what they could to support the sharing of the good news and the church. So as we reflect on how we are equipped by the church and how we can equip and support others in the church, let's finish with a prayer from the Evangelical Alliance. Almighty, gracious, glorious God, we thank you for your love, mercy and forgiveness. We are humbled by your constant faithful love. This year we pray for a new spiritual season. Thank you that your extravagant love means that there is no one so broken they can't be healed. No one is so lost they can't be found. Lord, your love pursues us. You came to seek and save the lost. And when you find them, all heaven rejoices. We thank you, Lord, that your love is not found in empty cliches. Your love is shown in the giving of your life for us. Your life, death and resurrection have opened a way for us to become the children of God. We know that the good news of Jesus is the power of God to change lives. We ask that your church may have a new boldness in sharing that news. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Give us compassion for the lost. Give us confidence in the good news. Help us to pray with passion, live with love and speak with boldness. Make us a people of faith. We pray that lives will be changed and heaven will celebrate a sinful, broken people find a forgiving, loving God. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Have a good week and see you soon.